A source is any process through which um, a greenhouse gas is released into the atmosphere. Uh, both pro natural processes and human activities release greenhouse gases. And a sink is a reservoir, that's another term for it, that takes up a chemical element or compound from another part of its natural cycle. In this diagram then, which should be similar to the one that you drew, we're gonna be looking for processes that would release carbon dioxide or release carbon. So some of those processes would be respiration by soil microorganisms or animals, as you can see in this part of the diagram. Decomposition as things start to break down, carbon dioxide is released back into the atmosphere. We have photosynthesis where the land plants are taking in uh, carbon dioxide in order to do photosynthesis. Um, and then of course, as we have decomposing things that settle into, uh, um, into the soil or into the bottom of the ocean and are buried. We also have a very large source where we have it begin to dissolve into water. Now the sinks would be the places that are a reservoir where they take up that element and they keep it um, for a long extended period of time. So our largest uh, sink of carbon would be in the earth, right in here. And there's also the second largest sink of carbon would be in um, the oceans. Carbon is an essential element um, in all living things. It's found in our carbohydrates, fats, proteins, in our bones, in cartilage, and in shells. Um, and so we, we look at the process of how carbon atoms move through the environment, and that is called the carbon cycle. And so we should be able to uh, determine how it cycles from, say, the atmosphere, and then all the way through all of the processes that it could go through and back up into the atmosphere in order to truly call it a cycle. Uh, the carbon cycle is driven by both abiotic and biotic processes. Um, some of the biotic processes would be photosynthesis uh, by plants, algae, and cyanobacteria. So in this process, they remove carbon dioxide from air and water and produce oxygen and the carbohydrates um, that they use in order to grow. So plants are a major reservoir of carbon. Uh, respiration also is going to return carbon to the air and the oceans um, as living things breathe. Um, the atmosphere is considered a short-term reservoir, uh, and there is also an abiotic process of um, gas exchange between the air and the sea as carbon dioxide is naturally um, dissolved into the oceans. Decomposition also returns carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Um, when we in extract and then um, combust fossil fuels or any carbon, um, we release that back into the atmosphere. So it's important to distinguish between natural and man-made sources of carbon dioxide. Um, one of the largest sources of carbon dioxide is through plant and animal decay. Um, but other naturally occur occurring sources um, that would be considered abiotic would be forest fires and volcanoes. Now, a man-made um, source would be burning fossil fuels, and um, this would be the primary source of um, carbon dioxide emissions caused by man, as the chemical energy in hydrocarbon-rich fossil fuels is converted into heat. Carbon dioxide is produced as a byproduct. Also forest clearing or deforestation and the burning of solid waste wood and wood products are also sources of atmospheric carbon dioxide. Just as trees and vegetation are sources of atmospheric carbon dioxide when they decay, they are a sink for carbon dioxide as they grow. There is carbon that cycles quickly through the carbon cycle. Sometimes it's considered fast carbon cycling. And this is as 
carbon moves through the biosphere, um, taken in as CO2 by plants, algae, and whatever, and then respiration occurs, releasing that carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. Um, but a slower process of carbon cycling um, would be as living things decompose, they return carbon to the sediments and into the earth. That's what, why one of the reasons we consider it the largest reservoir is the reason that we consider it the largest reservoir of carbon. This happens in the oceans too and has for millions of years. Um, as aquatic organisms die due to gravity, they're eventually going to settle in the sediment. Um, older layers get buried and uh, cause, and we have layer upon layer, which is sedimentation. And then eventually it lithifies into sedimentary rock. And as the millions of years go by, this sedimentary rock um, would eventually be converted into fossil fuels. So um, sedimentation is gonna be this um, event where it's removed from the fast carbon cycle and it stays as a sink much, much longer. Um, a lot of times we think of that as a reservoir, and that's a great way to think about it. Um, so long-term sinks like fossil fuels and carbon in limestone uh, can return to cycling via either extraction and combustion, like when we dig up fossil fuels and burn them, or through erosion and weathering as a, a more natural process. Take a minute and see if you can answer these questions to yourself. If you can, then you've got a good handle on the carbon cycle. Okay, I'm back and maybe I should have just told you to hit pause. So first let's look at identifying a process that removes carbon dioxide um, from the atmosphere. Things that remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere would be either um, a gas exchange um, via the oceans and the air, um, where we have carbon dioxide that is dissolved into the oceans, or you could say, um, plants in the process of photosynthesis that um, they are um, taking in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Now, um, if we're looking at the second part, a process that returns carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, now the most simple one that we can think of is respiration, but in combustion or, um, it, you know, it, I guess, um, combustion or uh, volcanoes or forest fires uh, would also be excellent examples of processes that return carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. The third part says explain how the combustion of fossil fuels returns carbon to the atmosphere. Now if a question says explain on your AP exam, it's not enough to just say um, because they're burnt, right? You would want to explain, you may say something like, if we extract fossil fuels and then we um, combust them, that we are releasing carbon dioxide, and then say something about um, when it's sequestered or in a sink for a long period of time, um, then uh, as we burn it, uh, fuel is broken down and carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere. So you just have to spend a little bit more time on a question that says explain, making sure that you've clearly identified and described what's going on. Well, I guess described and explained what's going on instead of just identifying it as saying combustion period. Okay, now the fourth one, the role of decomposition in the carbon cycle. That would include microbial respiration um, as carbon dioxide returns into the atmosphere or the carbon bonds which decay and return to the soil um, depending on the site.